Today we will visit a brand new shop that sells very cheap cars but also very rare and expensive slabs or cars that I've never seen before. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are in Kichoji. It's been a while. <laughs> My very first videos were in Kichoji, so it's a pleasure to be back here today. And the reason why we are back is because we are going to Trecario. Trecario is a fairly new store that opened in August or September, not quite sure, but it's been a few months only. And they are located five minutes away from the station. I heard a lot of good things about that store. I'm very excited. So. Let's head there and see by yourself. So this is Trekayun's building. As you can see, it doesn't look very much like a place where we would find a card shop, but the sign is here, so we are headed to the ninth floor. It looks very much like a residential building. And the last time we had a card shop in a residential building was a pocket center, so I learned not to be skeptical anymore. And here we are, Trecarion. This store looks so different from the other ones I've seen so far. When it comes to singles, they have a grading system, a bit like Maggie, so A, B, C, or D. A being near mint or excellent, B going from excellent to a slightly played, a C being played, and D being poor. So for on, on each card, you will see a tag, so A, B, C. For the D one, there won't be a tag, but the price tag itself will be yellow instead of white. So if you see a card with a yellow price tag, like this Iron Valiant, for example, it just means that, well, it's a great D. So while I go through their showcase with you, I'd like to give you some info about the store itself. They've opened last August, and you can see right away they are doing things differently compared to the others. First, the store itself is exceptionally clean. Really, like Apple Store level clean. Second, it's a Pokemon TCG only store. No Yu-Gi-Oh, no One Piece. It's Pokemon only. And in that sense, it reminds me again of the Pocket Center. Last but not least, the staff is super nice. The two ladies at the front have been very helpful. They took out all the cards I wanted to show you, and I did ask them quite a lot, but I never felt like I was annoying them. I saw them chatting with customers about their favorite Pokemon. They don't seem to speak English, but they gave me a very positive first impression. And I'm sure they'll do their very best to help you if you ever stop by. Oh guys, look at this Mew here. I think I've never seen it before. <laughs> do you guys know what set he's in? Let me know in the comment section if you know. I'm very curious. So I asked the staff to take out one card of each grade so that you guys can see the difference between A, B, C, and D. And as you can see, at least for the front side, it doesn't, you know, the difference is not that obvious. So let's have a look at the back. So that's the A grade, that's the Mew, as you can see. Well, it looks fairly good, right? It's near mint. For the B grade, though, it's less obvious. When you look at it from far away, it looks good, but if you look at it from close up, you can see some widening in the corner, like right here in the upper right corner. Um, but nothing left apparent. Looking at the C grade, though, we can see we have clearly more widening on more than one corner. So here we have the upper left, bottom left corner with widening, and of course the D grade. <laughs> That's the one you will probably be looking for only to complete a master set because you can see there is a lot of damage. They're pretty cheap though, to be fair. And moving forward, we have right in the center of the room, the slab showcase. And that's where it hurts, ladies and gentlemen. That's where it hurts because they probably have most of my chase cards, right? So like the Pikachu screen promo, the more you Pikachu, you guys know how much I want the card. Uh, the Poncho, Pikachu, the two Rayquaza here, Latias and Latios GX Tag Team. Again, the Lugia Crystal. They have the Lugia Crystal, PSA 9, but I don't care. <laughs> I'll take it anyway. Whatever the grade is. Uh, the Erika Umbrella, 
So again, a very beautiful card. The Rayquaza VMAX All Art, beautiful card as well. So it's, that's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot. They have two more All Art here. And fun fact, it says like, like cash special price. So basically if you pay for these cards by cash, you get a discount. Well, don't really know why and didn't bother asking. You know, uh, I guess if it's good for them, it's good for us, right? Win-win. <laughs> they have a lot more singles here. So Latias, Latios, GX again, SP on VMAX, the Pikachu promo from the Precious Collector Box. And they have some more here with Iono. They have overall a pretty good collection of uh, single cards. Oh, this Umbreon is beautiful as well. One more Poncho Pikachu, worth noting. So I had to ask the lady at the front if she could let me hold the Lugia Crystal and she very nicely accepted. A PSA 9 is so frustrating because the card seems flawless to me. I looked at it really hard and I can't find anything wrong. I know I like PSA 10s, but have to be realistic, right? Budget wise, I think a PSA 9 is the best I can aim for. And soon after that, she also let me get a hold on the Mario Pikachu PSA 10 this time. So of course, there is no need to uh, look at it really hard. It's perfect. It's a beautiful card. I love it. That's it. On the other side of the room, they have one more showcase with some more, if not cheap, at least more affordable slabs. <laughs> so we can see here a lot of Umbreon, so Umbreon V, Umbreon from Neo, Umbreon and Darkrai All Art, Umbreon V Max. So people like Umbreon. Oh, hey, <laughs> can't blame them for that. So while all the slabs in the center showcase we've seen earlier were all very, very pricey, um, I told you that this showcase is more affordable. Basically, all the cards in this one are below 100,000 yen. The cheapest one will go for about 10,000 yen, so that will be 70 bucks, about 70 bucks. And the most expensive one will be sub 100,000. So I would say the maximum you could hit in that showcase is probably a $650 card. They also have some loose packs here. Most of them from Sword and Shield uh, with a couple from Sun and Moon. Nothing big, but it's always good to have. And of course, like most of the Japanese stores, they have their own mystery packs. But this one is special. This is a see-through mystery pack. The concept is simple. You got two cards. One is inside the black sleeve. You can see it. The other one is face up. You can see it. And so that's how you pick your pack. Like I, I think I like the concept actually because sometimes you get mystery packs and you get only trash card that you have no use for. At least here, even if you don't get the hit card inside the black sleeve, you're sure that you at least get one card that you have some use for because you picked it, right? So yeah, I think that's cool. And finally, something I would have missed if the staff didn't tell me about it are these small binders right here. And they all contain cards from different eras, different rarities. So I picked three for you. One is the vintage one. So we have mostly uh, Wizard of the Coast cards. So just to show you uh, the type of card that we find in there, they are all hollows, at least so far, I can see only hollows. Um, and one important thing is that look at the condition of this card. Usually when you have binders like this in stores, like for example, do you remember in uh, Mandarake, they had some? But the condition is usually not great, right? They are lightly played for the best. Um, but these ones are near mint, so I think that's pretty cool and, you know, rare enough to be mentioned. Then we have the diamond and pearl uh, binder, so I'll quickly um, go through it with you. Diamond and Pearl and Legendary, I think. And finally, we have an SR, CSR, SAR. So all the illustration rare and secret rare. So we have, of course, more modern cards right here, right? So as you can see, we can go through all different eras with these binders. And all these cards here are sub 1000 yen. So they are seven bucks and less. And I couldn't leave without getting one of these see-through mystery packs, so I chose large red illustration rare because I really like the artwork. I think it's very original. The staff told me the least you can get in the black sleeve is an SSR, and that's what I got <laughs> with a Fortress EX from Shiny Treasure. Both cards for <laughs> nine bucks, roughly. Yeah, I'll take it. 
No better way to finish this visit, so I'll head back down and see you back at the studio. And we're back! I hope you enjoyed this first video of 2024 because I was so excited about it. This is probably my biggest surprise since the Pocket Center. And again, it's a store that's fairly hard to find for tourists if you don't know it there. The staff has been remarkably kind and helpful and I think they deserve our support for trying to up the game and do something slightly different from the rest. A lot of card shops down here are not particularly clean, sometimes even filthy one would say, but this one is a total opposite. It's clean and bright. Also, I have to confess, I can't get this crystal Lugia off my mind. Gotta get my hand on one someday so I can sleep at night. I didn't see seal booster boxes there, but it's worth keeping in mind that the store itself is only a few months old, so nothing tells us that they won't add booster boxes to their inventory in the future. Anyway, it was a pleasant surprise in Kitsuji, definitely one more reason for me to hang out there from time to time, and one more reason for you to visit this part of town, which by the way has a lot of appeal, even outside of card shops. That's it, I'll see you again next week, but meanwhile, subscribe, check my other videos, smash the like button, turn on notifications, and the most important of all, you know it, if you enjoy my content, please talk about it, share it around you, it really does help the channel. Thank you for watching! Bye.